Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Live Off the Floor series. I'm Anna, and I'll be your host here today. I'm very excited to have singer-songwriter Jane Matthew here today with us, and she's just about to join us. Oh. Hi there, Jane. How are you today? I'm good. Good. Thanks so much for being here today, talking to us a little bit about the work that you do. Sure, of course. So before we get um, into it, tell us a little bit about your background and how you came to be in the music industry. Yeah, um, so I've just been drawn to music my entire life, basically, and I've taken like music lessons here and there because like my parents were just really found music to be an important part of like everyone's lives. So yeah, I took lessons and then <laughs> I just really loved it. And I performed like here and there, like in high school. And yeah, I started, I taught myself the guitar and then- Wow, I, good for you. Uh, yeah, like it's really great. And then I realized I could write music too. And I don't know, I just had lots of fun. Now I perform here and there. Obviously like with COVID, it's all stopped, but yeah, that's why I'm really excited to be here and to still be able to share my music and talk about it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So it sounds like your upbringing and your background has kind of shaped, you know, your your musical For talents. Sure. And um, so how long have you been playing instruments and uh, singing? Yeah, um, so I took like violin lessons when I was like in elementary school, but I hated it so much. So yeah. I quit it. But then I think the only yeah, I started learning the guitar in high school. So I think it's been like five years now. And yeah, then I learned the ukulele. So currently I only play the guitar and ukulele. So it's yeah, been like I a couple of years. That's awesome. I noticed um, on your YouTube channel, you have, um, you know, a lot of covers that you do and also a lot of original songs and you, you are playing an instrument while you're performing. So have you always done both at the same time? Yeah, I have. Like, I I have. I think it's just more comfortable for me to be able to play an instrument and not just sing because, I don't know, it would be like, what am I doing with my hands? So that's always been good to just be able to know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, so again, I, I noticed lots of original songs um, on YouTube. So do you have a creative process that you go through when you write your music? Is there um, a place that you go to? Is there, you know, like some inspiration that you turn to when you write your next piece? Um, so for me, I usually just think of the melody first, and then I think of lyrics to go along with it. And I don't know, I guess I don't have like a set mechanical process. It just depends on how I feel like. I think for the songs that I've even written recently in these past couple of months that like I'm going to show tomorrow, like most of them I've written the melody first and then made the lyrics and like I can do it basically anywhere. I think sometimes it helps to be like in a busy, loud place because I don't know, like sometimes you'll hear random things and then you can, or hear random bits of conversation from the people around you and you can be like, oh, I find that really cool and then write it down or like hum a tune to yourself and then, yeah, it really helps. Yeah, yeah no, that's, that's really cool. So, so you don't prefer writing in like a quiet place, you actually prefer a busy surrounding. Yeah, like tip, it's, I think it's just typically I do it in a quiet place and I don't know, it just it actually helps to be in a place where I can hear other people and just, I guess it just feels like I'm a part of something. And that, I guess, is what inspires me. Wow, I just learned that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's amazing. So would you say um, emotion also kind of plays into it? Or how do you, um, you know, you might hear something, a conversation, um, you know, nearby, as you just said. So how, how, how does, how do you take like pen to paper when it comes to that? Um, I mean, I just like, I'm thankful for my phone. I can just like write it down. Um, but I guess it just depends on, yeah, basically how I'm feeling. And I never feel the same way consistently when writing my songs. So if I'm, I can be in a really great mood and be like, I really want to write a song or be in a really upset mood and be like, I really want to write a song. And like for hearing tidbits of conversation from other people, like 
yeah, if I may happen to hear something that like coincides with what I'm feeling, I'm like, yes. And then, yeah, I just write it down on my phone. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So is there one particular emotion that you find is kind of the most helpful or the, the strongest when it comes to this process? Uh, sorry, emotion? Yeah. Emotion. Okay. Um, like, I think I'd say like just nostalgia or just things that I've learned about my past or I think that really helps or just feelings of hurt I think yeah. really is really like I don't know just like things that affect me the most or things that feed into my music and yeah it's just natural yeah yeah and just kind of life events right that that happened throughout the journey I'm sure would inspire you as well yeah totally yeah is there a particular song that you're currently working on that we can kind of expect in the future Oh, uh, I'm not working on any music right now. I've been like, it's because I've written a bunch and then like, I've just been stuck in terms of like where to go from the current point that I'm at. So like I write a few words down and I'm like, oh, I don't know where to go from here. Or like I have a bridge. I'm like, I don't know where to go from here. So I have tidbits of song, but not like a complete song that I'm working on, but I want it to be. So yeah, hopefully. <laughs> No, for sure. And um, how how has the whole, you know, COVID pandemic um, situation right now affected your creative process and, and um, you know, how you express yourself through art? Yeah, um, it's affected it a lot. <laughs> um, so I'm like a busker for the TTC. So like I play in this uh, subway, like underground and that like whole program has shut down because of COVID. Um, and while before I was like literally making <laughs> like my income by playing and like expressing myself musically, that's like completely stopped. So I've had like plenty of time to write and stuff, but then like what I said earlier about being able to go out and being able to just draw inspiration from the people around me has like really been cut. So like it's been hard for sure <laughs> yeah and I guess any concerts as well right yeah um, would have been affected um so I know that you said you're not really working on a particular song right now but has this pandemic process kind of helped with some of the emotional side of your process um in terms of creating content wow um I guess so I think like I mean it has really helped to be able to have like plenty of time by myself to be able to just really think. But at the same time, having plenty of time by myself is like the key for like procrastination for me. And it's like, I do anything else, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you, would you consider yourself more of an introvert or an extrovert? Definitely an introvert. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Me too. But in, you know, in certain, in certain, um, rooms, right. Um, us introverts can feel a little bit more extroverted and yeah. I can totally appreciate how being like by yourself um, can really speed up sometimes like the creativity and just kind of being in your own thoughts. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so what's your proudest moment so far in, you know, in this career that you have in the music industry? Wow. My proudest <laughs> moments. Maybe you um, have more than one. <laughs> no, no. I'm just like, wow. It's, um, so, huh, I, th I thought it was uh, pretty cool to be like, um, so like, as I mentioned, like I'm a busker and it was like pretty cool that we have like a Christmas project. Cool. So it was like, it's singing carols and stuff, but it was which, with a bunch of like other instrumentalists, buskers who were super talented. And it was just really, I think really cool to be a part of that project. Cause it, especially because they only asked like a select group of people Good and for you. I, to this day I still don't know like why they chose a certain people that they did especially for the vocalist because yeah I really don't know but I'm really happy to be a part of that and yeah yeah, yeah. is there a, so how how many years have you been doing that um I started in hmm, I think it's been two years now Okay. I got my license in 2018 and it expires next year, but I don't know how COVID is going to translate into that, but yeah. 
Yeah, I guess there's no indication yet, right? If you can yeah. kind of get back out there in, in that ter- type of work. Exactly. Yeah, hopefully soon. I know. Um, <laughs> Is there, I know that you said, you know, being paired up with these other people, it's quite motivating and, and great. Is there anyone particular that you aspire to, you know, that inspires you, you aspire to be like in the music industry? I have like two people. Okay. <laughs> um, but, okay, so like there's this artist in the UK, her name is like Gabrielle Applin. Okay. And she's basically the reason why I taught myself the guitar because she has a song called Please Don't Say You Love Me. And I heard it and I was like, I really want to learn the song. So then, yeah, I t- taught myself the guitar simply to learn that song. And then I was like, I know this song now. I might as well just expand and learn more songs on the guitar. But yeah, she's really great. Her, her lyric writing is amazing. And yeah. She's just really talented. And then there's another one from, I think she's from Australia. Her name is Britt Fraser. And I, yeah, I think she's like the first album that I've ever (laughs) listened to or like downloaded. So back in the days when you still had like an iPod, I'd just be listening to her album like on repeat constantly. And yeah, yeah, they're both really inspiring and they're both women. And yeah, it's really great. Nice. How, how did you come across both of them? Um, just the internet. Um, yeah, for Gabriel Applin, she was basically just recommended to me on YouTube. And for Brooke Fraser, that was just like a name that I always knew. I think just because of my household and then like to download her album was like, okay, yeah, she's really good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's always nice to, you know, find those figures that you can kind of relate to or you aspire to be like, because it it pushes you, right, to to grow more, to learn more. And you learned the guitar. That's it. That's crazy. Good for you. (laughs) Thank you. That's amazing. How long did it take you to learn to play the guitar? Um, It took me like a while. Like even to this day, I'm like, honestly, my guitar skills aren't the best and I, I can definitely improve on it. But um I think to learn actual chords and to be good enough to play different songs is like probably a year I'd say yeah. it's just like really hard with the learning curve of like hurting your fingers and like getting calluses and then yeah. getting over that <laughs> not <Yeah>. ideal <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it's like I loved it so much I was like I don't care if my fingers are bleeding I love this yeah but yeah yeah yeah, and you, I guess you didn't feel the same way about the violin in your No, life. definitely yeah. not. I think, yeah, I think if I had an instructor or, or private lessons for a guitar, I would have hated it too. So being able to learn on my own just made me enjoy it so much more. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. I actually used to play the piano, but again, I was kind of forced to do it. Like my my parents really wanted me to do it. So I can I can totally relate. But, you know, now that... You say once you picked it up yourself and started learning, maybe I should either get back to it or also yeah. try to learn an instrument. Yeah, yeah, I think I think it's a different. It becomes a different type of motivator, right? When when you pick it up and you do it yourself. Exactly, and like always, what really helps me, even for the piano, like I know a tiny bit of the piano only because I've heard some songs that are so beautiful on the piano. I'm like, I want to learn this. So yeah, that's yeah. what helps me. Yeah. So, you know, aside from singing and playing instruments, is there any other form of art that you uh, partake in, like dancing or painting or anything like that? I actually just learned to do embroidery because of COVID. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm having lots of fun with that. I'm like decorating my walls with my embroidery. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's really great. Yeah. Did it. you did you also did you teach yourself how to do it? Did you buy kits or how to did... Um Wow, that's a good question. I I think like I saw this YouTuber who was talking about it and I just saw her process for it and it looked really soothing. So I guess she taught me, but it was like a mix of self-learning and YouTube. So yeah. Kits really help, but um I don't know they're expensive so I like yeah. printing out my own patterns and then doing it yeah so. no good for you it's it's a good way to you know pass some time and listen for to sure. some music while you're doing it right exactly or listen to some podcasts or 
Yeah, yeah. I love it. Do you have any favorite podcasts right now? I just, okay. So like I'm new to the whole podcast game. So like I, I've always just used to watch TV, but yeah, when I was embroidering, I kept on missing so much that I was watching. So it's like, I search a podcast and this is the only one I'm aware of right now. It's called My Favorite Murder. And it's by okay. like these two female comedians and it's really great. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. They're really funny. And they talk about really dark stuff, but yeah. They do it respectfully. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Dark humor a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah. yeah. No, it's nice. Podcasts are great, you know, mm-hmm. especially now. And, and you can really do anything while you're listening to them. Um, so that's, that's exciting. Um, so what's your biggest goal for, for yourself in, in the music industry? Um, I think like it can just be summed down to, I really just want to touch people's lives with my music. I, yeah, I wish it could be more measurable than that, but yeah, that's definitely what I'd want. I don't know. In like whichever way that I can, that's just my ultimate goal. Yeah. And I would love to do that. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's very powerful. And like I said, I did look at your YouTube channel and your original songs really do touch the soul, you know, if you <laughs> allow, allow yourself to really immerse into, into the songs, I think you're really capturing that. Um, so I'm really much looking forward to everything else you have. Um, wow. That's hopefully Thanks. coming out soon. Um, what's maybe the one piece of advice or you know, do you have a motto that you can kind of um, pass on to any aspiring young artists um, in this in this industry? Um, yeah, I just remember like a couple of years ago, I was like, I just really want to do music and I have no idea how. So then, yeah, that's why I started my YouTube channel. I think like right now, like we're so lucky to have social media and to just have this ability to create whatever we want. And it, yeah, I'd say like, if you want to do it, you should just do it in whatever way that you can. And I know it's really scary and it's terrifying, but yeah, if you love it enough, just go for it, just do it. Wow. Yeah, no, that's, that's very uh, inspiring. So I, so you felt that way and then you just decided to create your YouTube channel showcasing your work. Basically, yeah. yeah, yeah, and and it's been a few years now, right? I think. Um, wh- yeah, when so was the that. first time that you uploaded something up there? I don't. I think like four or five years ago. I don't remember, but yeah, I just I remember just doing it out of like desperation. I'm like, I need to express myself musically somehow, and yeah. <laughs> Have you seen a change in yourself um, when you kind of look back at those songs in 2017 and now? Um, you mean the covers that I did or the originals? Uh, both, just yourself as, as an artist. Have you seen, um, you know, a particular growth in yourself when you kind of look back? I think I'm just more sure of what I want, like overall, but especially for music, like, yeah. Um, I just know what I want to do. Like, I remember before for my YouTube channel, I used to do like weekly covers, but now that like I've grown more as a musician and like just know what I want to do more and more, like I don't do that anymore because like half the songs, (laughs) I don't mean this like as a rip, but like half the songs that come out that I do listen to, I'm like, I don't want to cover this. I'm just, this doesn't touch me. I'm not going to do it. Um, so I'd say, yeah, I, I'm more sure of myself and I guess more confident in what I want to do. Good for you. Yeah. And that's the beauty of it, right? You just keep evolving as a human, as an artist. Um, and then, you know, sometimes, you know, things, things change and yeah, that's very powerful. Thanks so much for sharing. Um, and, and, you know, now also through Instagram and, Um, you know, I also think because of this whole COVID situation, a lot of people are tuning into social media, arguably maybe a little bit more, right? So it's, it's a great platform that only a few years ago wasn't really available, right? So, um, yeah, yeah, when you say, you know, showcase your talents through social media, it's, it's quite powerful and I'm sure it's touching lots of people. So thanks for sharing that. Um, so is there anything... Is there anything lined up uh, for for this year that you have? I I know again, 
with, with the pandemic, it's a bit hard, but maybe you have some online uh, performances. Uh, yeah, before like COVID even came, I was working on an album with the producer, but it all got shut down. So like currently I'm applying for funding and waiting to hear back to see if I can even work on an album. Um, so hopefully if COVID gets better or if a second wave doesn't come, like that will be what I'll be able to work on. Um, but every plan that I have right now is so contingent on everything. So yeah. Yeah, I know it's such a weird time we're living in right now. Um, but it sounds like you do have, you know, certain things on the go and once yeah. everything lifts, you can kind of pick up where yeah. you left off. Um, and you have Instagram as well, correct? Uh, yes, I do. Yeah. So uh, let the viewers know what your handle is. And um, yeah, it's Jane.Matthew, like Matthew with one T. Yeah. Nice. Um, do you go to concerts a lot? I mean, before all of this COVID stuff? Um, before, I went to concerts like probably once a year, just for the artists that I really want to see. I just, yeah. Yes, I know. What's the most memorable concert experience uh, you've had? Um, so like, this is the very first concert that I ever went to, and it was like a surprise um, by my brother. Um, and it was a Ben Howard concert. And yeah, I don't know, it was really great. Just, it was funny because it was obvious that the audience was intended to be older, and I was like 13 years old um going in there but yeah. yeah I really loved it okay nice and um so since then have you been going regularly or um not so much uh I think like I've been going like not so often I think if like a really like if a band comes that I really want to see then I'll like just go and see it but I don't go as often as I would like to yeah, yeah. Yeah. What about um, like music festivals and, and stuff like that? I, yeah, like same with music festivals. I'm not the, like, I don't find that the most enjoyable because like, I don't know, it can be too loud and <laughs> crowded. Yeah. yeah. Um, what, what's a fun fact about you that no one really knows? Huh. Um... So, okay, when I was a kid, I would be really good. This is really random, but I'd be really good at saying words backwards. So like, oh. if someone gave me a word, I could say it backwards. Now it's not so good. It's, yeah, I haven't like honed in on that skill that I have. <laughs> was it like yeah. a secret language between you and some friends? <laughs> no, because no one else could understand me. So they yeah. give me a word and I'd say it backwards and they're like, how do I even know you did it correctly? But I'm like, I did it correctly. Yeah. I don't know why I can do that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so funny. I guess my, my name, Anna, is just pronounced the same oh, yeah. backwards. So <laughs> yeah, not so much yours though. <laughs> yeah. um, is there anything else you would want to, you know, personally promote here today? Just hopefully if my funding to record an album goes through just be on the lookout for that and yeah. yeah I'd be promoting it so yeah yeah nice good for you good for you um okay well honestly Jane thanks so much for you know being here today and letting our viewers know a little bit more about yourself um you know you're you're very talented <laughs> and uh we really appreciate you being here today and um course, great you. learning so much more about you